Hey guys, after my story last week, I got a whole bunch of questions on where to find sapphire dirt, how long it takes to go through the bags, and basically how to do it. So I decided I was gonna make a little video explaining how to, and then afterwards I'll show you guys our loot and what we found. Last week my parents bought six bags of sapphire gravel, basically from a sapphire site in Montana. I don't know where exactly, but that's where they got it from. For all those questions and they brought it home because they weren't allowed to mine it in Montana because of COVID-19. So we set up a mini sifting station in our front yard so that we could mine for sapphires and we started with a quarter inch sifter basically and we have this two bucket thing that is catching all the water and the runoff that's too fine for this sifter and then it goes down the drain right here doo -doo -doo -doo. and there's a bucket underneath that's catching off the runoff and so all the finer stuff will fall to the bottom of the bucket while the water just runs off the top the sapphire gravel looks like dirt it's dirty dirt and it's not very exciting so we take that and we pour a little bit into our sifter and then we hose it off and I'll flip the camera and show you guys that in a sec. So this is the sapphire gravel straight out of the bag. Super dirty, can't really see anything. So we take it and we just come through and hose it off. And I'm not worried about anything that's gonna fall through the quarter inch because it's all just gonna drain it here. And there's my drip bucket. So I actually put quite a bit in and there's a lot of little rocks, but basically you'll take handful by handful and you'll check for any sapphires you see in the dirt and let's see if we can just brush through and find one. Right at the top, okay? So here's one. You'll see this little guy right here. He's a little milky in coloring, but he is a sapphire if I can pick him up. In case you're all wondering, these nails are not helpful in this situation. And there's a little sapphire, and then we have a little cup that we put them in. And here's another one. He's a lot clearer. Not as big. Why does it have to be a boy? It has to be a boy because Jeez. the last one was a girl, and so I felt like making this one a dude. But super clear. I am. Ouch, mom. This hurts. Yep, you get to be on camera now. <laughs> so we go through and you basically sift out the dirt and then the dirt I've gone through really well, I dump in a bucket between my legs so that I don't have to worry about sifting it through again if it goes to the drain. This is our loot from all six bags from the four different days. Our first day, second day, third day, and this is our last day. And mixed in with a lot of these, we have a whole bunch of quartz, and you can tell it's quartz because it's a little too milky to be considered a sapphire, but we didn't pick those out. And we have a lot that we did on our first day because we didn't know any better. But sapphires can come in a wide range of colors, pretty much the entire rainbow. And to really bring the color out, you have to put them and heat them in a kiln. And there's only two kilns in the world where you can do this. One is in Montana and the other is in Germany. And the most popular colors are the deep rich blue and red. And so these pink ones have the potential to deepen their color and turn red, but you never really know. And this one's bluish and we have a greeny blue. You pretty much will find every color in sapphires, but like a dark emerald green. That's not something that you will find within the sapphires. But what differentiates them in value is clarity in the stone, color, and then size. So if it has a lot of inclusions, like cracks throughout the stone, then it's not worth a lot. But if it's a deep color and it doesn't have any cracks or inclusions in it, 
then you've got yourself a very nice rock. We didn't find many pink ones. This is day one is probably the day we found the most and they're the hardest to find, even though they're not the most popular color wise. And then this is our last day and it's the day we went through all the silt. And we found a pink one there, pink one, some nice blue ones overall. But it's really fun. It took us about two to three hours to silt through the big bucket. So on our first three days, and then this last day took us five hours because we had to pick out all the little rocks and these nails did not help in any way, shape or form. Our second day was the day we found the biggest and this is our biggest find. It has an inclusion in the middle, so we're not really sure what it could be worth, but it's a fun stone. This one also has really deep purple on the sides. So once we get it to the kiln, it'll probably turn a lot darker color and then our third day, we found another big one. It has, it doesn't look like it has inclusions. It just got, it just has freckles on the surface is what I'm gonna call them. It's not smooth like say this one is. Looks like sea glass when you're searching. But here's some quartz that we had mixed in and the quartz will get you a lot thinking that it's a red one or a pink one because those are probably the most exciting to find. You don't find them very often. This one has a yellow heart in it. Tilt my camera so you can see the lighting better. But these were our finds. We had a great time doing it. It took up a good chunk of time and we didn't have to be in front of a computer screen. So if you wanna do this with your family, I highly recommend. And you could make money off of it. But just like all things, it costs money to put it in the kiln, heat the crystals to get the rocks to have a good color and then you have to pay to have someone cut it. So I recommend sending your biggest in and then debating from there whether it's worth cutting the stone or not. I am no expert, so if you have any questions, looking it up online would probably be the same as consulting me, but if you do have any questions that you have for me personally, let me know and thanks for watching this video.